Welcome to the party. I'm Sam Ekstrom of Locked On Sports Minnesota. The extension we've all been waiting for has arrived. Hey, this is Arif with Wide Left. I brought my sound studio back. I hope you all like it. Luke Inman, at Luke underscore Spinman, day 700 of my hold in here at Locked On Sports Minnesota. Just patiently waiting for that Josh Metellus money. Come on, guys. <laughs> and I'm Luke Braun of Locked On Vikings. And remember, it's always about special teams. Braun, you changed out the book you have in your background. That's interesting. Let's talk about that on today's Minnesota Football Party. <laughs> Locked On Sports Minnesota Podcast. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. It's time for the Minnesota Football Party. Welcome in to the Minnesota Football Party on a lovely Thursday. Vikings Bucks three days away. Big show planned with Luke Inman, Luke Braun, Arif Hassan, myself, Sam Ekstrom, your favorite Vikings experts talking Minnesota Vikings football for the next hour. We're expecting a visit from Ron Johnson along the way. And today... We write in stone our official, specific, down-to-the-yard season predictions for the Minnesota Vikings, 10 bold predictions that we will put on the record and then replay in January to see how wrong we were. We've also got extension news. It's not Justin Jefferson. It's Josh Metellus signing. We analyze that out of the gate, and we address any injury updates or intrigue that we saw on the first injury report yesterday. But uh, let's get to the breaking news. After a word from Bird Dogs, today's show is brought to you by <laughs> Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on or enter the promo code locked on for a free water bottle with any purchase. You had the hat, the tumbler, now the water bottle. You won't want to take off your Bird Dogs. We promise you. Josh Metellus signs a two year. $13 million extension. Potentially, we don't have exact terms yet, but uh, the Vikings have locked up their safety, who has got to be one of the big winners of this offseason. He plays himself into a starting role with Brian Flores' defense, and now he is presumably with the Vikings through 2025. Uh, let's kick it to Luke Braun. This just dropped in the last hour or so. Josh Metellus extended. Your thoughts? I, my first thought is, man, good for him because that mm-hmm. guy has truly ascended from, you know, sixth round pick buried behind Harrison Smith. And I, was Sandejo still here when he got drafted? Or no, it was Anthony Harris on the franchise tag. I think you're um, right. Kind of just depth guy. Well, we'll see if he can make the team to core special teamer to actual like unanimous beloved captain. And now they're they're buying into him a front office that did not draft him is buying into him, which is always something of an accomplishment too. Um, It's not starter money. It's not, you know, this guy is going to be our our core safety or whatever. It's rotational defensive player and core special teamer money. And there is an absolutely valid career to be made uh, uh, doing that and being a, a leader on the team. I love it. Jimmy Ward, Chauncey Gardner, Johnson, um, Marcus Epps, another former Viking. That's hey. the the financial company he now keeps with a, an average of six and a half million per year. If indeed he sees that money, but Jimmy how, Ward is not a bad. That's not group a bad of people comp. to be with. Yeah. No, I mean, how yeah. unbelievable too <laughs> is the Viking safety history? Like turning Anthony Harris into a legit guy, Andrew Sandejo coming from nowhere, J. Ron Curse, Marcus Epps, even the guys Ryan who Russell stick, stick around. <laughs> it's really incredible, Luke. I think what what they've after, done after Jamarcus it, Sanford and Madhu Williams, they just kept knocking things out of the park. But they had to go through that first. Yeah, Corey Chavis, Brian Russell tanda back there, Corey unbelievable. Chavis, um, to Luke's Paul point Krause, though, too, guys, position. like <laughs> I can't think of a player who Mr. ended the season as a backup role player, special team kind of guy that is at this much of a rise and just hype going all the way back to the start of minicamp and OTAs to now offense or defensive guy. You know, you start as a backup special teamer, and now he's carved out just such a substantial, unique role in this brand new defense, no less. And, you know, what's going to be these three safety looks as this safety slash linebacker joker type of role. So, yeah, it's just it's kind of wild to think about because you just don't see this happen very often. But clearly, I mean, the coaching staff and KOC, they were super impressed with everything he did last year and year one of their regime. And then it just feels like the minute Brian Flores stepped foot into the building, 
he was circling Josh Patels' name as the guy he was going to find a way to get out onto the field. So, yeah, it's just been really cool to watch his path going all the way back to the 2020 draft, six-round pick out of Michigan, battles his way onto the team, grinds it out as a special team guy, works his way out of the field on defense here or there, makes the most of it, blocks that punt for a TD last season, but now he's earned it, right? He's earned his place on the defense. He's earned the right as a captain, and now he's earned this new contract. And it kind of helps keep intact this, what feels like on paper anyways, the biggest strength of the entire team, these four safeties on the roster, you know, when you look at it top to bottom, and then you just take a sneak peek into the future years. Okay, you got Cam Bynum locked up through 2024, and then Harry, Scene, and now Josh Patel is locked up through 2025, keeping that core intact for, you know, at minimum a few years to come. But yeah, Luke's right. Josh Patelis, so great to see. Easily, though, the biggest winner of this entire 53-man roster this offseason. Yeah, Ar- Arif still uh, muddies the waters for Lewis Seen a bit, too. I think there's an opening if Harrison Smith moves on or retires after this year for Seen to still get in this lineup. But it does complicate things a little bit, too, for your first-round pick now that you've got Bynum and Metellus for sure returning next year. Um, you know, it your first-round pick's kind of kind of blocked right now and I think Metellus deserves the the you know what he got but it does add to the intrigue around what are you going to do with this first round pick yes and no I think that unquestionably it, it complicates the question but I think that more the more you kind of dig into it the more there's just there still is opportunity for Lewis scene right because Josh Metellus and Lewis scene don't play the same role. They're at, they meet in the same position room, right? But they don't really play the same role, right? And so if Harrison Smith retires next year, right? If that happens, there's an opportunity for Lewis Seen to take that job starting next to Cameron Bynum and for Josh Metellus to play the exact same role next year that he'll play this year. And I don't think the contract prevents that from happening, but it's still a question about like resource allocation, right? It's still a question about kind of why it felt you know important to lock this guy up. I think that there is still some level of trade-off. I, to me, what really matters is kind of what this contract structure looks like, right? Because we know there's $6 million guaranteed. We know that he can earn up to $13 million guaranteed. We don't know what it looks like in between, right? We don't know what the base salary is. We don't know what the likely to be earned incentives are, which I would imagine there are not many unless it's like a special team snap count is in there. Um, we don't know what the unlikely to be earned incentives are. Maybe that has to do with snap count as well. Uh, and so if we know what his expected salary is, we can better answer this question about what the future of that safety room looks like. I think actually the thing that complicates, um, you know, Lewis scenes position more than this contract was drafting Jay Ward, right. And making sure that that safety room was going to be crowded no matter what. Now we know it's going to continue to be crowded, whether or not Harrison Smith is there again, Jay Ward plays a different role right, than Lewis seen. So it's not one-to-one, but it is difficult. I mean, the Vikings did it this year, but it is difficult to carry a lot of safeties. And so there are some implicit trade-offs. There's also just looking at like the timeline of the contracts. If it's a two-year extension, so he expires now after uh, 2025 because he was going into a contract year. Like the first mm-hmm. guy out of that room that will then need to be quote-unquote replaced opening an opportunity is going to be Harrison Smith, right? That was Josh Metellus because he was in a contract year. But now Harrison Smith, whether he retires after this year or after next year, um, that's going to be the like the first like hole that opens up. So I think that's where the opportunity starts to come. And when yeah. some of that roster pressure comes out, um, it, I think, yeah, it it means more for Josh Metellus than it does for Lewis seen. Obviously, like sometimes things can just be about the guy they're about. <laughs> Yeah, huge for Metellus, very exciting for him, and uh, not a contract that a lot of sixth-round picks see, even at a, a modest $6.5 million per year on average. Before Ron Johnson joins us, it's time for our Week 1 bets. Let's go! Time to wager at FanDuel. We have mythical money once again, um, where I think we start with a $1,000 bank like we have in years past. We have escalating minimums and maximums, $10 minimum, $100 maximum week one, and then 20 and 200, 30 and 300 and so on. A little different this year in how we're structuring the bets. We will be doing a two-leg parlay using your allotted uh, amount, whatever you want to bet. And we will reveal our parlay choice 
one leg at a time. If your other leg gets stolen by someone else in the order, then you have to pivot. You got to do something else. Uh, you have to do one traditional leg, which is a spread or an over-under, and then you can do a prop bet, a player prop or an alternate line, something like that as your second leg of the parlay. So um, I think as the preseason fantasy winner, I feel like I, I get to go first in the snake. Is that is that fair to everybody? That, that yeah. was what I would suggest. Okay. Yeah. Cool. It was in the back of my mind as a suggestion, but I didn't want to screw myself. But yeah. And again, That's because, fair. yeah. And because I was going to say it's a screw on reef. So yeah. Fair enough. And it, it might not even be advantageous because then my second leg, I have to wait six more picks for you guys to get through yours. Yeah. So, I, I feel for you, Sam. Um, but, <laughs> but I have to put go- something like wild in it that'll I'll absolutely ruin it. <laughs> Remember that I have an advantage that I can trigger any time before the trade deadline where I double my profits and have my losses by virtue of winning the preseason fantasy contest, but I will which, not which you have to which you have to trigger the day we register our bets, not the yes. day that the winnings come out. Yeah. Correct. I'm not going to trigger it today. I'm gonna to start my parlay. Howard. By finding a <laughs> just use it immediately and we never a ten dollar a ten dollar parlay. <laughs> Make these um, segments just a little shorter all season. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I'm just looking for a big number in in week one. I uh oh wait, no, that's what am I looking at? Oh, these are popular bets. These aren't the week one lines. I'm already thrown off, guys. Okay. I'm looking for a big number because wacky things happen in week one. And underdogs, I think, have more of a puncher's chance. So I'm looking at C.J. Stroud and the Texans plus 10 at Baltimore. Massive number. I'm going Houston plus 10. What a terrible first bet that was, but I just (laughs) hit it. I mean, I I would like it if I wasn't so concerned with what Stroud looked like in the preseason, which it's the preseason, who knows, right? But I did not love what I saw. Uh, otherwise, great. I love it. Read your analysis at Wide Left, Wide Left Substack. Uh, <laughs> let's just go in the order. Uh, Luke Inman, you were second in the, the preseason fantasy. Braun was third, Arif was fourth. That's also our circle on the YouTube screen. So go ahead, Inman. Perfect. Yeah, kick me off the year with an over-under Monday Night Football Bills-Jets. Give me the under 46 and a half points. I think a lot of people are going to be putting a lot of money just assuming Aaron Rodgers and Josh Allen put up the fireworks. Two great defenses, though. I think these offenses, at least the Jets anyway, starts a little bit slower than people anticipate. So I like the under in that one, 46 and a half. I think that's at minus 115. Yep, minus 115. Jets defense coming out party. Watch out. Okay. Fantastic. I, think, I was kind of surprised I was at 46 and a half. I would have expected it to be higher. I like the reasoning. I just think I, I probably wouldn't have taken the under until it got to 50. I probably wouldn't have touched this one. Fair enough. I wish I could buy a half point. Sam, will you let me buy a half point? Uh, no, are we looking at the, are we all looking at the FanDuel screen? Can we build the parlay and then relay what the the odds are? Okay. Yes. I am going to go for a player prop right off the bat. Anytime touchdown scorer, Justin Jefferson is at plus 100 right now. Very nice. How many you have last year? Nine. I have no idea. Sure. All right. Eight. Um, not not a not a red zone guy quite yet. It's like the one thing. He's no he's no Julio either, right? He scores. <laughs> right. But, but... <laughs> uh Alexander Madison's actually the favored favorite anytime touchdown scorer at that minus one forty. That is a glass wow. of certainty for really? a guy whose role we don't minus fully one... know. I, I think he's just the running back. Like that's it. Yeah, I that's <laughs> rough. I don't know. Okay. Both um, of those uh seen as more likely than Rashad White, though. So I guess really hates hey, that. May, maybe they love Sean Tucker, man. That speaking of guys I watched in the preseason. Uh all right. My turn. Uh, I'm just gonna go like okay, I think the the um the Chiefs, I don't want to say hype. What's the opposite of hype? Whatever that is. I think the fact that the Chiefs don't have Travis Kelsey and Chris Jones has overly depressed their line against the Lions. I think they opened six and a half. Now they're four and a half. That's nuts. That's insane. I'm taking the Chiefs four and a half. I love that. I love that. I should have taken that, actually. Uh, That's great. Uh, Reef, back to you on the the return. So it's it's either a money line or a player prop? Uh, 
I think, yeah. So or it's it, an over under, or what's what's the deal? It can. What do you guys think about this? We'll figure it out in real time. It can be a prop. Does it have to be a prop? I should we say should we say that yes, it does have to be a prop. It's so we're all playing I by the same rules, or no? Did not look up props. Where can I find the props? <laughs> you can find them in uh, more wagers for each oh, game. Geez. I'm willing to say that it doesn't have to be a prop. Okay. Um, oh, more NFL here. Okay. Uh, I was going to do money line uh, Bengals over Browns minus one thirty eight. That line Bengals also over stupid to me. Browns. Okay, and give me the final parlay amount. And right, so I'm going to wager one hundred. It is plus two two two. Beautiful. Thank you, Arif. Betting the maximum. This is not Which the Arif we saw do, last right? year. Yeah. Right. Oh, but I, I, I'm tough. starting out as an underdog until you activate that thing. <laughs> Luke Braun. Uh, you know what? I am just going to stick with the Vikings game. The money line just shifted in front of my eyes. Oh. Uh, since I'm taking a plus 100 prop, I'm going to take a, a more conservative money line. Vikings money line at minus two fifty five. Uh, wait one sec. A... I think so because you did a prop for. We do have to do one traditional, so one oh, okay. over under or spread. I'll start that's, over. That's relatively close to a you know a minus one ten type thing. Got it. Uh, I think I'm going to stick with the Vikings game. Um, whoa, the Vikings line just moved in front of my eyes on. Fanduel, it's minus that, that's five me. and a half. I'm now. changing the line right now. You are I'm, I'm dumping a lot it. of money. Just, yeah, it's now five and a half uh Vikings. It's we're favored by less than we were. Uh but I'm not actually doing that. I'm gonna do uh the under 45 and a half. I think these defenses can give these offenses more trouble than uh is expected. I agree. Which you know how much I hate agreeing with Luke. Yeah. Only need but one I... touchdown by Justin Jefferson. Not and then you're good. point fourth. The okay. under and a touchdown prop. That's that's fun. Let's go. <laughs> Wager and odds. Hit me. Oh, I have to click the buttons, don't I? I can do it for you if you're. Nope, I got unable. it. Uh, pl- plus 350. And I'll wager. That is a lot. Um, I, I can only risk like 25 bucks on that. And if I win, it's still great because it's plus 350. So I'll be conservative. I'm good. Luke Inman. Okay, I'm looking at a player prop here, one that I really like this week. Dolphins, Chargers, Miami's backfield. Jeff Wilson's on the IR. Devin A. Chain's dealing with his shoulder. Raheem Mostert versus Chargers rush defense. That was just absolutely garbage last year. Easily the worst rush defense in stopping outside contained. 50-plus yards. I'm going to play it safe. I could go 60-plus yards. Raheem Mostert, 50-plus yards. That's minus 168. You add that yeah, into the if Jets. If he hits 58 yards, you're going to look so smart. Yes, it's going to happen now. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Add that into the under 46 and a half Jets. Bills. Okay, Luke, you only bet 25 bucks. What a reef bet? 100. Put me right in the mail. I'm going to go 50 bucks to win 98. Two leg parlay cashes right out plus 196. The midpoint between 25 and 100 well, is definitely. We're not, I don't want to. I don't want to overwork Sam. That was <laughs> it, Inman, that what was your kind of math we trying to do here? <laughs> Give me your second bet one more time. What was Raheem Mostert, 50 yeah. or more rushing yards versus the. I Chargers. like the reasoning. Yeah, I like that. Sneaky good this week. I think if you play some uh, daily fantasy, I would look at uh, Raheem Mostert this week. Yeah, I think Dude. the Cardinals are a hot mess. They're going to Washington. New ownership, strong vibes. I'm looking at alternate lines on the commanders. I'm going to go minus 13 and a half at plus 200 for the Sam commanders. I truther. love it. Sam, Sam Howell Sam truther. truther. Yeah. Love the first name. Uh, they're going to yep. beat the Cardinals by two touchdowns. The Cardinals are going to be awful. Um, their quarterback, is it is it Dobbs? Like just I Dobbs. Think they, I think they named Dobbs like yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's either uh, him or what? Clayton Toon. Clayton Toon. Yeah. I mean, you you might see Toon in the second half. To be honest, that would be an <laughs> awful side. That'd be great for Sam. <laughs> right. Not because Clayton Toon is bad, but because they benched their starter. Right. Yeah. They're right. benching their starter a week into the first <laughs> or a half into the first game. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, James Conner is just gonna have two seventy eight carries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna do fifty. 
at plus 470. 50 on an alternate line. Wow. Let's go. All right. Plus Sam has four. learned absolutely nothing from <laughs> last year. I love Three. it. Week one. Here we go. Grab the shovel, boys. Start digging. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Johnson is waiting in the wings. Let's get a word in first from Bird Dogs. I'm wearing them right now. I woke up. There was a chill in the air. I put on my Bird Dogs pants with the cozy liners, and I am extremely comfortable in my chilly basement. It runs like 62 degrees down here, so I got to wear my Bird Dogs. I absolutely love these things. I'm a complete convert. That liner is fantastic with the cloud knit fabric. They've got the anti-stink sweat wicking fabric. They're just they're tremendous. You can head to birddogs.com slash locked on or use the promo code locked on. Uh, do it right now, and you get a free Bird Dogs water bottle. They're always mixing it up with those free add-ons. First, it was the the white hat, which I love wearing. Then it was the tumbler. You see me drinking my uh, hazelnut lattes out of it most mornings, and now it's the water bottle. So again, birddogs.com slash locked on. Use the promo code locked on. Get a free water bottle with any Bird Dogs purchase, the shorts, the pants. Get them with the liners at birddogs.com slash locked on today. I want a bird dog's hat, man. Ron Johnson joins us now, host of the Ron Johnson Show at three Ron Johnson on Twitter slash X, and he's got. Is that an Unreal hoodie, Ron? Yes, it is the Unreal hoodie. Ooh, uh, you can get yours nice. at the stadium on Sunday. Ooh, nice. um, check them out Sunday morning at the uh, Viking Store at the uh, US Bank Stadium. Always looking sharp. It looks like it's kind of a play on the new classic look. Is that correct? It is. Yeah. So it has the same lines on the back of the hood like it's the mm. i don't know if the mm-hmm. camera can see it so it's it that retro same. purple right. though too yeah it has There's the, so many different the, shades of purple it's that retro yeah, they, they tried to match it with the jersey they gave us the jersey uh the vikings did so oh. you know we got the the kirk cousins jersey oh, so i thought it was a sam was, bradford number it was eight. inspired i know i thought it was greg coleman at first it was like greg coleman <laughs> sam bradford I mean, we're going for vintage right yeah yeah so nope it's kirk cousins because uh the vikings clearly like they gave everybody a different jersey and they gave me kirk cousins so i don't know if they just know like i'm a i'm a, I'm a cousins uh supporter so you know yeah I don't yeah, know. speaking I don't know of, of number eight and bradford you know what i thought of when i watched the gophers on thursday Callie manis has like the big kind of open sleeves they kind of go down his arm they don't really hug and that was bradford's thing we yeah, called them sleeves because yeah. he didn't really he had the big floppy ones and i thought cali mcmanus uh gave me some bradford vibes see i'm glad i, I hate that you said that because i did not notice that and now i'm going to be looking at his sleeves. oh no so, it's, yeah. a, it's such a bad look man I did, I, I did not notice that. <laughs> and he's number eight that's the one thing oh. I did not notice, and now I'm going to be looking at his sleeves. Like, uh, yeah. I hated Sam Bradford's sleeves. Like, I, I, I ruined it for you. I you hate, were you right did. too. You were correct to hate. Are you going to ask? Are you going to ask him about the sleeves? I am now, because now I, I, I literally had no idea. I was just watching the arm talent, the great throws, the Daniel Jackson, the 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 Brevin span forward bit, uh, the run game that was kind of sleepy with Sean Tyler, but there was actually. Uh, we're going to cover this on on the, on the Gophers game day live this week. Uh, I got some plays from the game. I'm breaking down on the Telestrator, and oh, one of them is a Sean Tyler run. Uh, it was a, it was a ten yard run because everybody's like, oh, the run game. Blah, blah. It was a ten yard run, and I actually broke it down. Uh, there's awesome. a pulling tight end and a pulling tackle. Mm. So they ran like they pulled inside. It's, it's, it's a real cool counter the way they ran it. Um, and so I think they're building on that. I just it's think they feel like GT you know what this counter. kid can throw. That sounds yeah. good. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds great. But now I'm looking at the sleeves. It's like, golly. Yeah. Now you no, get into it's, the it's hard important to look stuff away. that really matters. Right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Ron, big news of the morning. Josh Metellus. Oh, yeah. It's a two-year extension. Let's get your reaction to that. Yeah, friend of the program, uh, Josh Metellus. I think, you know, clearly if they don't think Harrison Smith is, you know, maybe one or two more years, they're trying to see if Josh Metellus is going to step into that role as starting safety when Harrison Smith exits and retires uh, a Minnesota Viking. So, uh, but it's a good look. I mean, honestly, we talked about how many safeties they get on this roster. Clearly Brian Flores. And I think that's what everybody's like, other than the omelets and the bacon and the potatoes. Um, the next thing you want to see Sunday morning is how many safeties are on the field and how many snaps do they get together? Because that's the reason. So Josh Mattel is clearly is going to have a role on this defense as well. Because you don't you don't give a guy six million up front, thirteen million for two years, 
if you're like, hey, you're just going to play special teams. So clearly he's going to have a big role on this defense. Yeah, Ron, uh, just broad overview, I guess, of the Vikings team because it's year two now, Kwesi, KOC. What, what should we be looking for to change or grow in year two of this? Like, is there anything specific you hope we finish the year and look back and say, all right, regardless of the record, they took another big step in this department, whatever that may be. Yeah, I can't remember how the Paul Abdul song, I think it was what, two steps forward, one step back or something like that, or was it one <laughs> step forward, two steps back? I can't remember what it was, but either way, you don't want to do that. You don't want to see them going backwards, and I think that's the, the key in year two is there should be some type of growth. Again, Ed Donatel was the question last year. He's gone. Kevin O'Connell, Quasey, everybody was like, oh, they're too nice, and, I, and they did it. They got rid of him. Um, so now it's going to be the Brian Flores show, I think. If this defense can be a top 15 defense, that's it. They don't have to be top 10, top five. They, top 15 defense, and this offense remains to what they were, this is a playoff team. And so I think that's what we want to see is, does this de- – like, if this defense just looks bad, then it's like, okay, there's not a 3-14. Like, you need to go back to the 4-3, or you need to move on from Daniil Hunter and bring in some outside linebackers, um, you know, who can truly play outside linebacker. Like, that's – I mean, Daniil Hunter is honestly like asking Joey Bosa – or Nick Bosa to say, hey, we're going to be a 3-4. We need you to stand up a little more. Um, In their systems, they're going after the quarterback. That's why they get paid what they get paid. And so I think that's going to be the key to this is how how can Brian Flores look at what the 49ers and Chargers do and say, you know what, I can encompass this within my defense. But so I, but between Quasey and Kevin O'Connell, I think they're solid. I think is the, this this 90% of this season, we're going to be wondering how has this defense changed. Well, I, I do want to ask about that defense because, you know, with those changes always comes the opportunity for confusion and mistakes. I always remember, you know, new players coming into the Zimmer defense, getting confused and getting benched uh, just because of how complicated it was. It very much seems like the defense has a lot of roles for a lot of players. It could become complicated. We've got every player is basically new to the system except ones that they like signed over from other teams. Um, what are the odds or the chances that this could create some initial confusion in the first couple of weeks while players try to figure out kind of what their assignment is, what the role is from play to play? Yeah, so I think so. This is one thing I noticed with like the Gophers and just because we do the PJ Flex show every Tuesday, I'm able to get some intel on what they do. So I don't know if you guys seen the new thing where they put tarps over the top of the guys calling the plays now. It's super, super weird and creepy. But what they're doing is they're trying to that. they're trying to stop people because I explained I'm like what is that they're trying to stop filmers from up top like guys like a reef with their cell phones <laughs> filming down <laughs> on the sideline you know trying to get intel like oh every time he does this you know they rush off the outside so they're trying to cut down <laughs> on the number of cameras because there's no camera angles on the sidelines that coaches can have in in programs so now the above tarp is the new thing because they're like look there's nothing stopping a fan slash coach um, from just getting the ticket and being right behind the gopher sideline with the telescope or the, you know, and so the NFL, I think what what you're going to see Arif and, and, and to, you know, make a long answer short, uh, basically that's what, so on the sideline for college, they doing all this stuff to, to stop that. So the DVs have a guy to watch the linebackers have a guy to watch. And then the line has a guy to watch. So there's three different coaches giving out three different signals plus dummy people as well. Giving out. I mean, there's a lot of, chaos college is great it's chaos it's chaotic <laughs> i mean you got people holding up signs of, of like britney spears and, and it's you know it's, it's, we're blitzing it's chaos blitz because it's britney spears and she's absolute chaos right now so like that's what you <laughs> do <laughs> uh, you know like that's i mean you can i love the signs because people always ask like why did you have jessica alba with sauce gardner and, and aaron Rodgers on your sign oh because that's our big apple blitz you know like they went to a knicks game i mean it's i'm going deep in the weeds on this but when you talk about NFL, it's a little bit simpler. The green dot guy is going to be the most important to that defense. And I think that's going to be the key this year. Whoever's wearing the – because we don't have an Eric Kendricks. I mean, Eric Kendricks is on the leadership council for the Chargers. He hasn't yeah, even played it up. down yeah, there. Yeah, right. Yeah. He hasn't played it down there. So clearly he's a, he's a leader. Adam Thielen, you know, he's a leader for the, for the Carolina Panthers. So when you lose some leaders like that in that locker room alone, you got to find new guys. And so on the defense, that's your – I mean, Arif, honestly, this is what I'm going to say. There might be some confusion because you don't have some of those voices, some of those guys that are used to this. Um, I don't know what the calls are going to be. If they're going to have a, a, we used to call it a get back coach. He would make sure everybody had to get back, like whoever's job that is. But they're going to have a personnel coach, I'm sure. Like one guy is going to be in charge of, hey, I'm giving you the calls. You need to have my personnel ready to switch because we're subbing out. And so you're going to see 
every once in a while some chaotic switches uh, like oh i thought this was three safeties it's two safeties i thought this was you know four dbs and it should be five like there might be a little bit of that because we know flores talks about the multiple sets and so honestly this this week one couldn't have been better to play the buccaneers i mean not, nothing against the buccaneers but it's good to not start the season off with like the packers or the eagles early because at least you get one game to kind of work on that stuff like hey Here's where we screwed up. Here's some of the verbiage that guys are confused on. Um, I've seen it numerous times being on the sideline where guys just are helmet off, having some, you know, seeds. They're sitting back talking. Oh, shoot, I'm supposed to be in. And then they run out and the coach like, nope, screw you. Sit down. Sit down. You missed your chance. <laughs> so so there's going to be some human nature in this. But I think, you know, game one, most of these defensive guys is a good thing. They don't have any like superstars on this defense where you're going to get some of the egos. I think everybody on that defense, even Harrison Smith and Daniel Hunter, are egoless. And so I think there's going to be a lot of guys really dialed into, hey, Brian's trying to call this game. We know the defense was a problem last year. We can't let it be the problem this year. So long answer. At the end of the day, two answers to this, Arif. One, I think there's going to be some chaos. Some stuff's going to happen. But two, I think it's going to come down to the personnel coach to make sure he's listening to Brian. Like, hey, we're, we're changing this. We're changing this. Have these guys ready to go so that they don't have that, like, oh, we got to call a timeout. There's only 10 guys out there. Or there's 12 guys out there. But, I mean, you know, it always happens every once in a while. Uh, there's been a lot of reports over the last 24 hours, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, about – this weekend being the time for the Justin Jefferson extension. Mm -hmm. A lot of different people have corroborated this. So my question is, what are you doing to celebrate Justin Jefferson extension day? Today? <laughs> oh, what am I going to do? Well, you know, we're going to pop some champagne. We're going to do the gritty. We're going to take a cigar out. You Which know, one? Yeah, there's uh, some new gritties coming out. I know. Well, we'll talk about that. Or did you guys already talk about it? Not yet. Not yet. Uh, yeah, we'll talk yet. about that. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I honestly, I'm just sitting back waiting to see the number because I think that's what everybody wants to do. So honestly, like it is a Thursday. Um, my celebration probably will be pop the grill open, take it easy. Kids have softball practice tonight. So usually our Thursday nights are late because the kids practices both are at the same time, which is great. Actually, we can that's nice. yeah. take them both at the same time and then we pick them up. You know, they, they both actually two different teams. But two of their practices are at the same field, so that's oh. actually better too. Same park, Perfect. so yeah, no, just one drop off, one pickup. Uh, but I will say this: like I'm just sitting back. I want to see the number because we just saw Bosa got his money, um, and he got off the plane. Sorry for scaring you, 49ers fans. Um, <laughs> that's how I imagine it. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> That's what his voice felt like to me when he said that. Like, sorry for uh, scaring Yeah, me. no, sure. Yep. It, doesn't sound uh, like it sure does. does. Yeah. <laughs> Finkel is Einhorn. Einhorn is Finkel. Like, I don't know. It just it just felt weird when he said that. Like, like just get off the plane and go sign your contract. Um, but no, I, I think I think they have to. I know they want to get it done. Uh, and so I'm I'm super excited to see this number because we've all been talking about it could be here and it could be here. It could be cup. It could be you know the greatest thing we've ever seen. You know change your life money donald trump now is coming out saying you know they went back to the lsu clips and he looks like look at him that's money like i mean so clearly <laughs> we knew this was coming you see that, Arif? no oh it's yeah they, they won the trump went to the white house he's like where's justin jefferson this man's gonna be rich one day look at him just looks like money he's gonna be Amazing. worth a lot of money yeah oh, that's like four years ago so now that. that clip has resurfaced because now he's about to get paid monumental money and now we're gonna you know we're gonna attribute justin jefferson's contract to donald trump um so i can't see that going wrong <laughs> <laughs> there's also a fake quote out there by some yeah i, I saw that, that yeah the yeah. justin jefferson saying that, you know he's got my vote now since he knows i'm gonna be rich oh, oh. <laughs> Oh that gosh. that got a couple of people. Oh, it got yeah. a bunch of people. So, like one person literally Vikings. said, "I'm not going to the Vikings game. Like, I'm not going to the games anymore. <laughs> oh and I'm not God. ever going to gritty again." <laughs> and I'm like, "You got to be Cancel dumb him. to think any player would come out for any candidate. Like, I don't care what side you're on. Nobody's coming out right now because uh, yeah, Everyone, we're not going to talk about America. Jordan, man. Everybody yeah. buys shoes." Just buy the shoes. Like, yeah, don't even don't even talk to me about that stuff. I'm just gonna worry about, you know, can I vote on the next city council for an easement uh to get a park redone in our neighborhood? Like that's what I'm voting on. Um, but no, so I, I I'm excited for Justin Jefferson. I want to see the number though. I, I really do. I want to see yeah, it, you know, is he a Cooper Cup guy? Is he gonna be a team? Because he feels like a team friendly guy to me. Um, if they explain to him, like, hey, look, man, we can give you 200 million, but if we do. I don't know what quarterback we're going to be able to have for you, you know? And so I think that's going to be how you weigh it. But I will say, I don't know if you guys saw the Gilbert Arenas. 
interview recently and uh they asked him he made 171 million dollars in his nba career he never sniffed a ring and they said would you give up 50 million dollars so you still have 120 million dollars 121 million dollars would be in your bank account you mm -hmm. have to give up 50 because you probably go to a different team you wouldn't be able to get the max extension you can go play with you know three uh, you know partner up with somebody and that's what they were alluding to um because he always stayed by himself just say pay me pay me pay me i'll stay with the wizards pay me a whole bunch of money i don't care about winning um yeah, he's with the you, Wizards. Obviously, he doesn't care about winning. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was their question. Kind of, they were alluding to that, like, "Hey, would you, you know, take a pay cut and go play for the Lakers with with Kobe?" And he was like, "No." He's like, 50 million? He's like, "Man, I can get a ring on online right now for ten thousand dollars." That's so true. I can, I can airbrush myself into that uh, championship team photo too. Right. He's like, yeah. I get AI. Like for fifty million. He's like, I'm gonna just wipe these tears with these. The hundreds. one thing though yeah. is that and, uh, I'm is good. That so Tom Brady more than made up the money he gave up in endorsements after those wins. True. Plus, True. Delta just signed him like not as a ad guy, not as like a spokesperson, but as like a strategic. Uh, leader vision, like an exec, guy. he's doing Hertz, like he's, doing exactly. Hertz. he's like Fox. He's, he's gonna, gonna like leave his, I, I guarantee, he's gonna start leaving Delta. his Hertz receipt now in every single car he rents because <laughs> that Darren Rovell tweet alone, he's like, How much was that worth? And Darren Rovell was like, Uh, damn, you got me. Like, <laughs> like Brady's like, Dude, I did exactly what I hope would happen. You to post, I actually rent from Hertz and I actually do their commercials. And he had Darren Rovell like stuck, like. Damn it. He got me. Like, <laughs> Tom is not dumb. Like, he wants people to know you just sat in the same car that Tom Brady didn't drive. Somebody drove for him, but that somebody else drove Tom Brady in when they got to town. And so, yeah, Brady's smart. But I, I'd say that you're right. Like, if Justin Jefferson takes maybe a lesser deal and he wins a Super Bowl, you're right. Mm -hmm. Like, the money's going to just Which pile a, in from endorsements. A bit of a gamble. So, and he's already a gritty guy. Already he already is, endorsement. I think, yeah. yeah, he already has, he has endorsements. so many, yeah. So, yeah, and so that's going to be the question is, like, how much do you really want to win or do you want to just set the market? And that's going to be a question because when you have a tight end that wants to reset the market, you have a receiver that wants to reset the market, you're not paying running backs, so you can get away with that. Uh, but then your quarterback. Can you go get a J.J. McCarthy? Uh, you know, are you going to wait for three years and get Dante Moore out of UCLA? Because he's only a freshman. He's got two more years before he can come out. 6'4", 6'5", 240-pound quarterback that made UCLA look great. He's from Detroit, Michigan, from my high school, Detroit Martin Luther King. Shout out. Um, but, yeah, like, do you want to play that game? Like, are, are you going to hope Caleb Williams pulls the uh, Eli Manning and doesn't want to go to the Cardinals and says, I only want to play with Justin Jefferson? Like, there's a lot to, to to go with that. So, no, I, I'm, I'm excited for Justin, but I do really want to see this number. Yeah. Um, in closing, Justin Jefferson put out the new gritty dances God, for the season, Lord. apparently. I don't this. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it says no, we, we got the jet. I know. It's so bad. The, it's the so pretty. Gritty. We got the. Oh, handoff, I loved it. The handoff gritty where you give it's... it to your teammate, get him involved. And then you got the LeBron, <laughs> the LeBron gritty, which, I, you know, he they did it wrong. His... I'm a LeBron fan and I'm mad yeah. because LeBron gritty is terrible. Like people are talking about, oh, that's fire. You are no. a follower. They, you are that not a Kevin Garnett thing too. Uh the, 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 the dust flowers? is, yeah, the like the, 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 the that was a Kevin is. Garnett thing. So it's like you don't need to throw that in LeBron. The LeBron gritty should have just been this with that. That's it. Mm -hmm. Like you it's like you're so close, and then you screwed it up. Like the, the Monopoly gritty. That's the shooting dice gritty. That's not Monopoly. Yeah, I, I think they had to change the name for Viking Social. That's True. the thing. Probably can't say I like that. Oh. Dice. You don't like the names more than the yeah, actual. Correct. Like if okay. I was thinking Monopoly, okay. I'm like yeah. gritty around in a square. Yeah, do and not pass, pass go. Do not collect and then throw $200 up in the sky. <laughs> Actually, I, don't that know. Was, <laughs> I like that Here's one. the thing. Let me let me imagine or reverse back one. to jail. Like end up in jail and then go back. Yeah. Like, oh. come on. Like imagine yeah. week one. In the classic uniforms, Justin Jefferson scores a touchdown. He starts doing the gritty. It looks normal. And then out of nowhere, he hands it off to Jordan <laughs> Addison, who then starts doing it. Imagine if we hadn't known about that before. Right. Okay. How that's, yeah, sick so that would be. Luke and I like, were tweeting about like this. A, like, a, like a movie trailer that put all the funny parts in the trailer. Like now it's all. What's, yeah. Now it's all yeah. Spoiled. Luke and I were tweeting about this. You, there was no reason to. You could do a making of. Like I know his friend came up with the gritty and he wanted to spotlight his friend. And that's wonderful. I it's totally not his friend, that's though. That's awesome. I thought nope. it was his friend. I thought no. it was like somebody he knew from back at LSU. Nope. It's an LSU guy, no? Nope. Oh, I, th I thought that too. You got to look at the whole story. He is a friend oh. of Jamar Chase. 
Okay. Jamar well, Chase and him knew each other, and it was another guy at LSU. What ended up happening, long story short, Justin Jefferson just was famous first. <laughs> so Okay, well, yeah, yeah. That make, yeah, that's fair. But so I'm Justin gl- Jefferson I'm glad, put it out there. Like, they did I'm it glad. at LSU, if you kind of go back to the LSU championship. Sure. They did it. Yeah. But it wasn't like, we weren't all like, oh, who is this? When he gets to the NFL, he does it. Everybody's like, whoa. And then J- Jamar Chase gets in the NFL, and we're like, whoa. Yeah. So then now this guy's like, hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I created I'm glad, this. I'm glad so, the guy's getting credit. He I is. He's on. That, he's trying to get on Mad now. He's got Eminem sponsorships now. Eminem is about to start gritting. I hope he got a Fortnite paycheck. That's probably yeah, a big Yeah, I know. Yeah. I saw that. He, he did because I know Justin said he's going to gritty until EA Sports puts it on there properly. So right, Properly? Okay. So yeah, I guess they didn't happened, fully come but, through. And yeah, I don't know. There was some money. You know how it is. Money um, and probably getting them in the suit. And I think the gritty dude wants to be the guy in the suit, but they're like, no, we want Justin in the suit, not you. And so yeah, I get that, you know. But yeah, um, so I'm glad that that guy's getting credit and all that. But you could have done this partway through the season where you go through all of the new gritties that Justin mm-hmm. Jefferson had performed in games. Correct. And then, and then, you know, match them up with him teaching Jefferson what those gritties are. And that would look a lot better. And also, we wouldn't have had this reveal beforehand because I'm totally with Luke. I feel like celebrations are just way better if they occur on the field. And to the fan, it kind of seems spontaneous. Just organic. organic. It's obviously yeah, not. Th- and that's where I was going with it. Organic. Like, I would accept yeah. every single, like, the jet gritty, the monopoly, like, all of it. The hamstring gritty. Jabbar Chase with the, the snowfall gritty. gritty. Like, yeah. that one was the best with the snow was falling and he yeah, did that like, was good. like slashing through the snow i was like oh my goodness like that was the one i think that was up for a a, a selly whatever nfl selly of the year um but you're right he should not have shown us that because now we're all watching it and then we're gonna see justin doing it kind of be like oh that's the monopoly that was all right yeah like you know versus like what was that oh if he he the video comes out right if he reveals the monopoly gritty which i agree the name is bad but i think it's just like the vikings (laughs) don't want to get in trouble yeah sure um if he reveals the Monopoly gritty during game or even just like the reverse gritty, I, right. those look great. They look fantastic, especially if they occur in a game. And it's Watch Hasbro, though, yeah. Monopoly come for the Vikings. Like, hey, I was going to say, is that Milton safer? Bradley's going to be all over him? <laughs> yeah, trademark. You can't, you no, can't no, no, use but, our but, name. But Monopoly, when you're dead. Monopoly is also just a word, right? So True. you can't. So but but you're fine. insinuating like the word Monopoly does not have dice in the description in the dictionary. And they have think, a monopoly on Greece. watch monopoly right. sales are going to skyrocket. They're going to be fired up. <laughs> they, now they just need to have a Vikings monopoly board. Like they might as well just come out with a Vikings monopoly. Oh yeah, board. They, they should. Yeah, I'm they sure should they already do. They already have just an NFL cross one. and go is like US There's Bank an NFL Stadium. monopoly that I played when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah going I, I, to jail is actually I, like one of the county jails. Um, I would say you have to figure out the cities. You put like Eden Prairie and Edina over with board. Like Boardwalk would probably be Eden Prairie and Edina. I'm guessing. Um, you know, you can kind of play around with that. Like, yeah, it could. If you roll three fun. doubles, that's a Jordan Addison. <laughs> there you go. Whoa. There you go. Wow. There you go. Wow. I had to think I'm about gonna, that. For I'm going to choose the little car so I could be Jordan Addison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fastest looking one. Um, Ron, oh, we had fun man. with you, man. I get to bring the dog with me. <laughs> have we seen a dog is there a dog there's a dog there is monopoly. one there's one photo of a dog on his instagram we've researched this recently the or fo- like the photo is in the car by the way <laughs> it is i didn't realize you that, didn't see that. Was it, okay it, well, is it posted after because there's is definitely this... no it was posted before there's definitely okay. a dog okay. photo in the car okay <laughs> well it's a little credibility there. Um, Ron, this is bringing the dog to the game now at this point. That yeah, dog is it. A, like in halftime. better, everybody. In halftime. It's Jordan Ass's dog, everybody. <laughs> He's feeling great. Half the crowd has no idea <laughs> what's going Ring on. Ring of Honor inductee. Arif is standing Addison's up. Arif's doing like a standing ovation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. We're, we're oh. off the rails. Uh, round table great tomorrow show. where we'll, we'll lock into an official game prediction for final score with Reggie Wilson, Luke Inman, and you, Ron Johnson. I'll be there, too. Uh, that'll be a lot of fun. And, of course, we'll uh, we'll rehash the full game next week with you, Ron. But always good having you at 3 Ron Johnson on X. Check him out. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate it. We're going to work on like a you uh, Unreal giveaway again. I know we did that last year and work on Unreal right now. So mm-hmm. stay tuned for that, people, because uh, Locked On and Unreal, we're going to figure out a partnership to – Maybe give away a hoodie or two this season. Love it. Those things are nice. They also. are. I, I will say this is true purple. Last year was like a suck skittle purple. This year is like true purple. It's nice. re, it's if you're if you're not watching on YouTube, 
Locked on Sports Minnesota to see Ron Johnson right now in his unreal. And they have uh, a quarter zip glory. version with a hood. So that's the one I'm getting Sunday. I already told them, have me one sitting on set when I get there. It's a quarter zip with the hood. So, but yeah, has the old, the, uh, yes, the old school jersey. It's a cool look. And check him out on Vikings Game Day Live as well. Thanks a lot, Ron. Appreciate it. See you, Ron. You can also hear Sunday's game on the Sirius XM app, SXM app for the hometown broadcast. Uh, just search Vikings and search Locked On Sports Minnesota. Get all of our shows, the Ron Johnson Show included, and the Minnesota Football Party. Make sure to check that out as well. All right, we've reached the part of the show where we make specific season predictions for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, I've got 10 prompts for you, and I want specifics, guys, down to the yard. Um, so we'll move kind of fast, get through them all. I'm stalling right now, trying to find my list. All right, this is where we start. Justin Jefferson, receptions, yardage, touchdowns, all three of them. We'll start with Inman this time, and then we'll, uh, we'll go around the circle. JJ, 2023, year two of KOC, put me down for 116 receptions, 1,978 yards, and 13 touchdowns. Explosive season for Justin. It's going to be mm-hmm. disappointing when he doesn't get 2,000, though. All right, um, Ron. Uh, I'll split the difference between last year and 2021 just because there's full season at TJ Hawkinson, Jordan Addison, some other options. We don't need to force the ball to Jefferson as much. Uh, so I'll go with 111 receptions. Oh, for... I was going to pick 111. God. So was, that's literally what I have written down. 111. <laughs> 111. All right. Uh, wow. For... Let's go 1754 and nine touchdowns, oh, one of which geez. will come this week. <laughs> <laughs> A reef. Uh, well, okay. Now that 111 has been taken, and I don't want to repeat it, even though I'm confident <laughs> we would be allowed to, um, I'm just going to go all the way up. Uh, I'm going to say 134 receptions, which is more than I think he's ever had. Uh, uh, 1,949 yards. Um, so just Dang. shy of 2,000, which is going to be very frustrating. Uh, and then I had to get touchdowns in there as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's going to increase his touchdowns per uh, yard. So I'm going to go with uh, 12. That's a lot. 12. Fantastic. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, Counting on a reduce in targets down to 170, uh, 9.8 yards per target. So 1,666 yards. I did have 111 for receptions. I'm going to go 110 so that I can win if he goes under. And uh, 11 TDs. Dustin Jefferson. Uh, Kirk Cousins, yardage, touchdowns, INTs. And let's toss in fourth quarter comebacks as well and start with Braun this time. Yardage. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm trying to think of what the funniest number would be, and I think it's four thousand and one. So I'll go with that many yards. So you can technically say he had four consecutive four thousand yard seasons. Low number. Um, he's usually good for yeah. You know they'll be they'll be leading more. They can run a little more, a little better this year. Uh, fewer attempts. Usually he's good for around thirty touchdowns. I will say exactly thirty touchdowns. Uh, what else is it? Interceptions and comebacks and fourth. I'll give him two fourth quarter comebacks. And now that he's more comfortable in the scheme, we'll say plays a little bit safer. We'll say nine interceptions. Nineties. Brief. All right. So we want yards, touchdowns, comebacks. What else do we want? Uh, INTs and comebacks. And INTs. Okay. Uh, I'll do, I don't think there's going to be a huge change. I think he's going to be more efficient, but he's going to throw the ball less. So, uh, I'm going to go 46, 16 in yards, 31 touchdowns, nine interceptions, three fourth quarter comebacks. Three. All right. That's pretty ambitious season. Uh, I'm going to go 600 throws this year. So a bit, a bit of a reduction, Career average, 7.6 yards per attempt, so 4,560 yards, 32 TDs, also nine interceptions with one 
fourth quarter comeback in a regression back to uh, back to the mean in a major way. Luke Inman. So you guys all think just in general, you guys all think that maybe his numbers are going to step back just a little bit. That they're going to be running the ball more. They're going to put a, yeah, a they'll more run of the ball emphasis more. on running the I ball. Yeah. I mean, Bron's the only I, one who Bron's the only one who did a big reduction. I think Arif and I are right on. It's not that crazy yardage. Yardage. That's either. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, on, the we're yardage. on yardage, but we both yeah. decrease the total attempts. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep looking at that schedule. I see so many elite quarterbacks, and I just feel like they're going to have to throw the ball a lot this year. I really do, at least in the second half of games. I got 4,997 yards. I got 35 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, and three fourth quarter comebacks. I'm the slinger this season. So you've got Jefferson 22 yards shy of 2k and uh and kirk three yards shy of five thousand yards yeah, let's go it's, <laughs> it's not about the stats though sam it's about the wins and losses yeah. for these guys they don't care about that stuff and, and that will be like an eight and nine season the best quarterback in the draft to go a pick before <laughs> and if only we had lost week 18 they went they try as hard as they can in week 18 as a seven and nine team just to get those those marks and win the game um, Arif Hassan, let's start off with the sack leader and with how many sacks? Uh, Daniil Hunter, sack leader. That one's pretty easy. Uh, let's go. It's tough for him to break 15, but uh, I believe in it. 16 and a half. Whoa. Let's go. All right. Oh, um, just shy of a sack per game. So I'm. I'm really high on Marcus Davenport. I'm going to be maybe the odd duck here and go Davenport because I think if they can find a way Famously to get him on the good field, at getting sacks. This no, this is my this point. Is he he doesn't get sacks, which means he's due. If he gets on the field for 50 snaps a game, which Pat Jones Saints, is due too. Yeah, hey, the Saints could zero never zero do this. I was taken. I think they're going to use. He's just going to play more than he ever has. I think he might be an 800 snap guy. And if he converts like sacks at a normal rate to pressures, because he does get a lot of pressures, I think he's right. sitting on a 12 sack season. 12 sacks. And that would be the leader. Yes. Okay. Luke. Uh, uh, me or Inman? Inman. Andre Carter the <laughs> second. <laughs> No, be be real. Be serious, guys. Jonathan Bullard, obviously. The player who will suit up. Uh, <laughs> to get Hunter, in a hoodie. Uh, just don't have the guts to go your route. I, I respect it, though, Sam. Hopefully, Marcus Davenport does indeed do that. I got Daniil Hunter, 13 and a half. I kind of feel like the sacks are going to spread out a lot, spread around a lot to guys who maybe aren't even defensive linemen in mm -hmm. this. Uh, so I wonder if the Vikings will generate a lot of sacks, but I don't know if it'll be any specific player. But that kind of means that it's got to be Daniel Hunter leading anyways, because I think he'll be, I don't know, feels like the one that's the most consistently in the backfield, right? Yes. Uh, but if we're not rushing for all the time, linebackers are getting in there sometimes. That might take away what would otherwise be sack opportunities. I'll say Daniel Hunter, but it's like eight and a half, but we're not mad about it at all. Right, because it's like the team is sure. 60. Yeah. Yeah. Record in one score games. It was checks notes eleven and zero last year. What is it going to be this year? Eleven and one. <laughs> eleven and one, including postseason. Right. This is uh, this is me to start. I, I looked at their previous two years combined. So oh twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one. Was that twenty four close games? Yeah. Insanity. Wow, that's exactly the right number. Yeah. <laughs> They were 12 and 12. We've had this argument a couple times. <laughs> yeah. They were yeah. 12 and 12 in one score games before last year, and then 11 and 0. It's going to be more of a 500 thing, but I'll give them a little nod um, and say 5 and 4 just because I think they're off nine really good. one score games. Oh, they are absolutely going to have a ton again. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so too. I mean, I, I just I look at the schedule. I, I just can't. don't My see a lot of can't. blowouts either way. I mean, I guess, <laughs> better get ready versus the Bucks. Raiders. Like Paul Allen. I don't see a two score game no. on the schedule. I can't find <laughs> any. I can't find it. Where are they? <laughs> I got six and five. Jesus. Six and, six five. and five. Love uh, enough. Huge regression, by the way. It, <laughs> yeah. Get your heart medication ready. Like, this is uh, going to be another one of these. I'm going five and five. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, so so we have we have eleven, we've got nine, and we've got ten, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just win by picking eight one score games, right? Well, the record Maybe. though, I think we go by win. Let's go by winning win percentage. If we, what? The, why would you go through all of the thing that you just went through? You got to go by like totals. That's crazy. Record, I think you should get the props I think you should get a point for number of wins. Games. I think you should get a point okay. for a number of wins and number of losses. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. I think that makes the most sense because it rewards because if they you go for getting one and total, one. I should not right. win. I was not right. You know. Yeah. Um. So it rewards you for getting the total, mm-hmm. kind of, but yeah. You know, also like for it. the record. So I like it. Total wins, total losses. So I'm gonna go with. Six, I'm gonna go three and three. Whoa, and, Homer. Yeah. Whoa. Which also <laughs> gets me the Kirk Cousins State? three fourth quarter comebacks. Six is still kind of high. Uh I don't know if you've like around the NFL, there's one score games are not that kind. I know it's difficult for people who watch the Vikings to believe, but one score games are actually not that common. <laughs> yeah. I don't believe you. But they're more and more common all the time. Like I hear this every team week. is just built to blow leads and make comebacks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. Yep. It is. And now it all is. we did was add a really volatile blitz defense. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, but one that like, twenty one in the generally works. Watch this. Yeah, <laughs> uh, on one, average, though. that's why not I said five one. and five and not ten and zero. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right, now we're gonna get Zanier. Alexander Madison hurdle attempts. attempts okay, are you or are successful you be, hurdles? Are you I will going be, to be tabulating this all season? Yeah. I mean, there's okay. not going to be that many. Uh, Luke Inman, what do you think? One. I got one. Uh, one successful. That's, that's low. Well, I, uh, well, does, does not have to be successful. Oh, does it does yeah. not have to be just successful. Like he could get upended and do a somersault, but that would okay. still count. All right, give me uh, give me Madison four. Copter. I think he's going to oh, go so one he, for four. So he was going to he was going to really struggle with the the hurdling. The guy was a hurdler. Come on, man. No, no, the league's adjusted. They've watched the film. The, the league's films adjusted. Out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think he's chilled out on it a little bit. He definitely he has. has. I'm gonna go with yes. two. I think I think he. I don't think he's he's that into it. He'll maybe he'll try it a couple times, but I, I don't think it's gonna be as much of a thing as it was his rookie year. Uh, six. I love that. I hope it is six. Um, I'm gonna go three just because it's a number you guys haven't said. Um, interception leader with it. how many? Kirk Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is Braun. <laughs> Got to be Harrison Smith, right? See the easiest one. Yeah, that makes yeah. Sense. I'll give him three. Brief. Three is the interception leader. I mean, that makes sense. It just feels bad. Um, I'm going to go with Byron Murphy. Six. It's going to be a great season. Wow, Ooh. that would be an unbelievable cornerback yeah. season. Yeah, I'm. I'm right That's there with insane. both of you guys. I <sighs> hold on. My 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 turn. Yeah, let Sam go. Come on, Luke. Come, come You're on. Acting like Braun man. here. <laughs> whoa. Penalty whoa, flag. Whoa. 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 <laughs> I'm I think buying him in that kind of more center field role where he's the deep safety. I think he'll he'll uh snatch some overthrows. I'm gonna go buy him five. Now it's your turn, Luke. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. Are we ready? Yeah. Let's go. Harrison Smith blitzed what fourteen times last season. They're obviously going to send him more on the blitz, a lot. Mm. I still though, I still think he ends up with the most interceptions. He, he might get an interception on a blitz too. Yeah, how's this could. Thing, baby? Harrison blitz. <laughs> yeah. Harrison blitz. I got five. He's had five. Let's see, one, two, three, four times in his career. I think he did he had it last again. year, didn't he? Didn't he have yeah. five last year? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Him so and Pat five. Five for five. Five for fighting. Longest play from scrimmage for the Vikings this year. Do we have to say who it goes to? Uh, for I mean, a bonus point, you want yeah uh, yeah bonus point. How about that? Okay, yeah. There so it's go. my turn, right? It is your turn. Seventy-six yards, Justin Jefferson. Um, I'm going ninety-six yards, breaking Chester Taylor's uh, longest Vikings run in franchise history. Madison, Ty Chandler, Madison, Matt, damn. You took this thing I was going to do. I'll just say JJ. Matt, Madison is such a funny pick for this. <laughs> yeah. Mint's turn. 72 yard swing pass out in the flat to Ty Chandler, a la AP and 07 from T Jack in his first game. 
Got a lot of faith in Ty Chandler. This whole group. Let's Can put I, in. I was I, gonna say Ty Chandler, but now I want to be different. Can uh, I, let's go I. for. It'll be like a sixty-six yard deep post to Jordan Addison. So nobody went with Kenny. Correct. From scrimmage? It's, no. It's from scrimmage. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. I mean, he he broke off some long ones at what was it, Iowa State, right? He broke yeah. off some long ones. And he's, he's missing how many? I mean, he's missing a third of the season. That doesn't really help his odds, but. Which makes it all the more uh, humorous, I feel like. Yeah. When he gets it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. Special teams and defensive touchdowns. I'm going to go an ambitious four with one kickoff return, mm -hmm. two fumble recovery touchdowns and one pick six do we have to specify how no we... you don't you don't <laughs> i was like sam i'm not built for this in men uh give me three i think they're all defense too no special teams touchdowns this year no special no belief in kenny this does I, feel you, you were just talking about how much you believed in kenny and now here you are i was trying to get somebody else to do it <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to goad us into a take that's bad huh Oh, you don't need to go to us. We're ready with the bad Locked takes. and loaded. You Seven. are built for Speaking this. Of. Seven. Yeah, why not? What 26 are you do? Jail me? over again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they'll all come in the first five weeks. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what year was that? What year was, was that? 2016. 2016, yeah. 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 It's, they went 5-0 and when North Turner was like, this offense is not working, and he was right, and he resigned. <laughs> and then they just lost a bunch of games and – Bunch of fans were like, "Hey, why did North Turner resign? What's that about?" It's like, well, the it offense was, wasn't for it, man. And Ken, Kendrick's pick six, yeah. Cheryl's to the house, Cheryl's to the house. Anthony Barr in overtime. Yep, um, Tampa Bay. That was yep. that was 14. that was twenty fourteen. Oh, that was fourteen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Um, when everyone Sin liked. Sendejo got down to the one yard line against Philadelphia before the season collapsed. Like that was the last good oh, thing we yeah. had. Was there a punt block that year? Sixteen. That would it would stand to reason. Oh, uh. Xavier Rhodes went 100 yards. That's right. To the house right after, after he had limped one? off the field. Y yeah. Was it? Wasn't there one against Cam Newton? Wasn't there like a Daniel Hunter strip sack? Like the, deep. There was, was for sure a safety? a safety. There was a safety in that game, and I think Cheryl's. I think Cheryl's yeah, had Cheryl's a. Uh, oh no, Cheryl's came in at corner that game. Yeah, it gets Kelvin it's Benjamin. Well. Yeah, this guy who's right. like a foot, like that's legit, right. actually a foot taller than him. <laughs> And he got a pass deflection against him. And then the next play, he's up against Greg Olson. And he does fine. Stud. Anyways, seven. Seven different players. Seven. Yeah. All right. Seven, seven different players. Crazy yeah, why not? Uh, okay. I'm so, not going to doubt Ron. So we had what? We had oh, one, should. three, and seven, right? Is that Those oh, are the numbers? Four. Four, three, four. and seven. Four, three, and seven. Uh, I kind of wanted to pick four. Um... I, I believe in Kenne. I believe in whatever the punt return situation is. Who's to say? Uh, and I believe Najee Thompson's going to force a uh, a punt fumble, which you can't. It can't be a muff. Can't advance. It has to be a fumble. Well, you can you can advance a fumble, right? But not a muff. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's correct. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, which is why they shouldn't have counted in the preseason fantasy as a fumble. Uh, <laughs> but which I, I I'm bitter, even though Sam agreed to it. Um. And it was Sam's point that I gave him. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with five then uh, because of Najee Thompson and Kenny Wongwu. We're going to get something in there. Something crazy. Last year, the answer would have been two for reference. Last year, yep. it was Kendricks in the end zone and uh, Wongwu. Regression Kendricks way past the mean. Let's go. Kendricks in the end zone. That was such a funny one, man. Good like, more. Why? Thank you, Josh Allen. Leading Why would rusher. You let that happen? <laughs> leading rushers, total yardage, Everybody. and who is it? This is uh Inman. Uh gotta go with chalk. Gotta go Madison. 1076 yeah. just cracks the four digit mark. I guess that'd be about 66, 67 a game ish. If he played every game. Like that. I, I think it's gonna be more of a timeshare. It's still going to very much be Madison. I don't think it's. I, I think he'll 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 get spelled for like entire drives sometimes, mm -hmm. which will will cut into it a little bit. So I'll say it's going to be seven hundred and thirty. Oh, that's a significant reduction. Um, I I thought I was going to lowball uh with mine, which uh lucky eights eight eight eight. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go with Ty Chandler. I propelled by his 96 yard touchdown run. They start him. <laughs> uh, Ty like, Chandler. Wow. I didn't realize we had this guy on our roster. Job's yours, buddy. <laughs> Chandler with 783, and Madison will be like really close to that. All right, last one, and this one requires a lot of math and a lot of guesswork. Oh God! Total. Offensive or defensive snaps combined for the rookie class, not including special teams. Oh, all right. Not including special teams. And this is Brian. So yeah. what do we get? Like 60 snaps on each side per game, something like that, 55? Yeah, I think, I think total most teams get 1,100 on offense and or defense. 1100 so so times 22 yeah thinking of somebody like makai blackman will say he plays half of them so that's like 550 oh my god i have to like do math don't i right this is rough uh all I, right here we go i got mine jordan addison <laughs> i'm, just, <laughs> I'm it. just gonna round this out jordan addison 900 makai blackman 700 j ward zero Quellen Roy Zero. 300. Well, I, it, no special teams. Yeah. Uh, five, I don't think they were going to get him from scrimmage a lot. Unless a corner gets hurt. You know, yeah. Zero? So 300. So I got 1,900. Jaron Hall, what, five? Sure. Kneel downs? Yeah, sure. So I got, what do I got? I got 1,900 and five. Let's just say there's an injury or two. Let's just subtract uh, 200. So 1,705. Uh, my pick is 2,000. I, I came up with twenty one fifty, uh, with eight hundred for Jordan Addison. I got like five fifty for Makai Blackman. Uh, three hundred for Jaquel and Roy sounds about good. I said uh, fifty for Jay Ward. Maybe he gets in a little bit if someone gets hurt. Has to come in a couple times here and there, but it's not going to be much. And then four hundred and fifty for Ivan Pace. Th- that's insane oh, I didn't have that we place. all got to the same place like roughly the I-, I have 1760 and I said exactly 300 for Roy which I think both of you did Luke's and I said 450 for Ivan Pace which is exactly what Luke Braun said that's and I said 800, 800 for Addison which one of you said too um, and then I accounted for 20% re- like a 20% drop because of injuries to the group and I arrived at uh, seventeen sixty. Actually, make mine twenty one forty four, so it's a more specific number. Oh, uh, make mine uh, two thousand one. Never forget. <laughs> so Inman's in a good spot here because it could be less than seventeen oh five, and he gets he gets the win on that. Um, that that was an interesting yeah, exercise. An- another year of does Quasi know how to draft after seventeen? <laughs> Can't wait. Can't yeah. Wait. To- 2,000 rookie snaps does seem fairly high. I, I don't know how that stacks up to around the league. It seems like For a big number. Having I, six I gave, draft picks I at gave, the end of the day, too. I and the top Addison two are like, starting. So yeah. I gave Addison like 900, and I gave uh, Makai something like 500, something like that. Um, and from there, it's like pretty easy to construct. Like, Jaquel and Roy is like 300. Yeah. You had 100 here or there for some other players. Like, Jay Ward, I actually gave... Uh, what, 100, 200 snaps, something like that. And then I was like, yeah. And then, you know, the undrafted, right? Andre Carter and Ivan Pace. I didn't think specifically about, you know, how much Pace and Carter would actually get, but I was just like, the rest mm-hmm. will, that'll bring it up to 2,000. So. You get one injury to Addison or Blackman for even three, four, five weeks. Mm-hmm. I believe that would hurt. They, uh, they're durable. Um, the Vikings picked these oversized, bulky players sure, in the draft yeah. that sure, sure, sure. can right. withstand injury. Yep. Uh, yeah. None of them have an injury history none. in, in sure. their college. So Bullet I don't group. see them losing any snaps. Yeah. 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 Checks Everyone out. plays 17. That's why they didn't play in the preseason. <laughs> we'll save them up. <laughs> uh, fun show. That's why I've been the preseason. Yeah, right. uh, all of those are locked in. I will send these out so that it's part of the permanent record. Uh, appreciate you, Arif, Wide Left Substack, Luke Inman, at Luke underscore Spinman, Luke Braun, Locked on Vikings. We'll have the postcast after Sunday's game. Check that out on Locked on Sports Minnesota or the Locked on Vikings audio feed. See ya.